Welcome to HouseKnowHow.com. I'm Martin Newmark. Today, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate reverse polarity in electrical outlet. I'll explain how I find reverse polarity, what causes it, why it's a problem, why it's a bit of a sneaky problem, and how to fix it. As a home inspector, I find reverse polarity by plugging an outlet tester, like this one, into an outlet. The outlet tester will show me most of the problematic conditions of an electrical outlet. Here's what reverse polarity looks like when the tester is plugged into an outlet. The red light and the center yellow light are lit. Note that other testers may show different lighting configuration when they're used. And also note that I'm working with outlets outside of an electrical box with exposed wires and it's dangerous. I could get shocked. Don't do this yourself unless you've educated yourself as to the hazards and are willing to take the risk. If the wiring was correct, it would look like this. Two yellow lights lit. So that's how I find reverse polarity. But what really is reverse polarity? First, we need to know what regular polarity is, and that will just take a couple of minutes to understand. In our home wiring, there are wires that push electrons from the electrical system into our electrical devices, like appliances, light bulbs, computers, etc. And there are wires that return those electrons to the electrical system, since electrons need a complete circuit in which to move around. The wires that push the electrons are called hot or high voltage wires and are usually covered with a black or sometimes red plastic insulation. I'll refer to these as the black, hot, or energized wire. So this black covered wire is the hot wire. The wires that return electrons to the electrical system are called neutral or grounded wires and don't have any electrical pressure in them. These wires are usually covered with white insulation and are called white, neutral, or grounded wires. This is an example of one of the white wires. Since the black wires have pressure in them and the white ones don't, electricity is able to flow from the black wire to the white wire through an appliance like a toaster. This difference in pressure between the black wire and the white wire, voltage in electrical terms, creates polarity. Now, before discussing reverse polarity, I must explain a bit how electrical appliances are designed. I'll use a toaster as an example. The toaster needs to be connected to both the hot side of the electrical system and the neutral side of the electrical system to make a complete circuit. The toaster also has wires that run through it that heat up and toast the bread, or the occasional slice of pizza. No, no, no. Don't put pizza in your toaster. The toaster also has a switch that turns it on and off. For safety reasons, the switch is put just inside the toaster or any appliance on the black or hot wire where it enters the appliance, like you see here. This shuts off the electrical pressure before it gets to all the wiring inside the toaster. Now, if you design the toaster so that the switch is on the neutral wire as it passes into the toaster, all the components in the toaster are hot all the time. That's because the hot is unswitched and it's got electrical pressure on everything inside the toaster. This is essentially what happens when a toaster is plugged into an outlet with reverse polarity. So if someone sticks a knife in this toaster to clean out all that melted cheese from that slice of pizza with one hand and touches something else, metal or water, that is somehow connected to a neutral wire or ground somewhere, with the other hand, they can get shocked. Getting shocked can give you a little buzz or it can stop your heart from beating. Neither one is pleasant. So when you plug your toaster into an outlet, you ought to be darn sure that the black wire is switched, not the white one. 
this is correct polarity. Now, the sneaky problem with reverse polarity is that most appliances will continue to work if they're plugged into an outlet with reverse polarity. So we want our electrical system and the cords of our appliances to enforce correct polarity. So the question becomes, how do we enforce correct polarity? It's a two-part answer. First, we need to enforce correct polarity in the wiring in our home. Next, we need to enforce correct polarity from the outlets into all the appliances that we plug into them. To enforce polarity in the wiring in the home, we have rules or building codes that tell us black wires are always connected to the hot side of the system and white wires are always connected to the neutral side of the system. Now this sounds easy, but it isn't always. That's why we have licensed electricians that are schooled in how to do this. And that's why you should always have electrical work in your home done by an electrician. To enforce polarity from the outlets in our homes to the appliances we plug into them, we have polarized outlets, plugs, and extension cords. Polarized outlets in modern homes have three holes in them. One for the hot wire, one for the neutral, and one for grounding. This roundish hole is for the ground wire, which we're mostly ignoring today. The other holes are slots that are parallel. One is a short slot, the other long. These short slots and long slots define and enforce polarity. The short slot is supposed to be hot and the long slot neutral. Then, the plugs that we plug into the outlets are polar polarized too. They have one wide blade and one narrow. This ensures polarity as the wiring passes into our appliances. If you find an older appliance or extension cord where the blades are the same width, I recommend not using it because polarity won't be enforced. So how did that outlet I showed you at the beginning get reverse polarity? There are many places in the wiring system where the white and black wires can get crossed, but the most likely place is right on the outlet itself. First, for correct polarity, the black wire needs to be attached on the side with the short slot. Black wire, short slot. And the white wires need to be attached to the side with the long slot. Here's our long slot, and here's our white wire. If the black and white wires are installed on the wrong sides of the outlet, you get reverse polarity. So this outlet with the black wire on the long slot side and the white wire on the short slot side causes reverse polarity. To fix reverse polarity, all that usually needs to be done is to swap the wires on the back of the outlet from one side to the other after, of course, turning off power to the outlet. I always recommend having a licensed electrician do any electrical work in your home. All possible wiring and errors and nuances that can get you into trouble can't be covered in this short discussion. If you decide to attempt repairs on your own, please make sure you've educated yourself on how to do this properly. That's all for our discussion on reverse polarity. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the contact page at housenowhow.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Martin Newmark for housenowhow.com.